One of the great things about living in France and being in France, which can be a blessing and a curse, is the incredible amount of fresh vegetables that you get at the markets that happen every week in pretty much every town across France. The curse side of that is that those vegetables are usually picked at the peak of ripeness and they're very fresh and they're meant to be used within one or two days of picking them. But if you don't use them within that one or two days, they may not look as great. It doesn't mean that the flavor is gone. The flavor is still there. But what do you do? You make a fall vegetable soup. And that's what we're doing today. Fall vegetable soup with found vegetables. Hey guys, if this is your first time tuning in, let us know you're out there by giving us a thumbs up below and then hit that subscribe button over here in the left corner to make sure you never miss a video. Now let's start cooking. So I thought that I would do this vegetable soup today in real time, uh, mostly in real time. Um, so you can really see how, how quick and easy it is and how fast it comes together. So generally when, um, you know, I'm doing a, a fall soup, it's, it's really because we've got the vegetables left over. And so some of them are not, you know, they, they've been around for a, a, a few days and you can kind of see there, you know, we had little, you know, this one got, I don't know what, happened from the vine there but we just picked the these are actually fresh but just picked them and um, I've got some zucchini that have been sitting around for a while I've taken the insides out just because uh, they, they went a little bit soft we've got these sugar snap peas that have lost a little bit of their green but you'll see how we can bring some of that back um, I've got a fennel bulb that I've used most of it and uh, we've got a little bit left over and uh, so we've got some some carrots We'll do this soup just like pretty much any other soup. We'll start with some aromatics. Our aromatics are going to be onions, carrots, and celery. So that's going to be the first thing that we do is to, to saute and to uh, sweat our vegetables like that. Then we'll add a little bit of garlic, a little bit of garlic to it. Um, and then the other vegetables that we have, we've got some uh, red, green, and orange uh, bell pepper. We'll use a half of each one of those. And then I just scrounged around to see what are the vegetables I had. And so we're going to use a one of the carrots for aromatics, but then we're going to use one of the carrots and it'll actually be part of the soup. I mean, it'll all be part of the soup, but one of these will leave kind of uh, in, in bigger pieces. And we found a potato, so we'll use that. We'll peel it and, and use that. And uh, as well as a, this is a, it's called a patisson. The French name for this is patisson. Uh, you may know it as patapan squash. So I'll actually show you how to break that down and to use that in your soup as well. So, and then we've got a bouquet garni that we're gonna use. And the bouquet garni consists of some fresh rosemary, some fresh thyme, some fresh oregano from the garden. I've got a sage leaf in there and a fresh bay leaf from our laurel tree outside. And we're just gonna wrap that up. I had a little bit of a leek left over, so we're gonna wrap this up in this leek leaf, and that will be our bouquet garni. We'll wrap this up, tied with some string, and that'll be our, our herb portion of our bouquet garni. And then once we get our uh, vegetables sauteed or sweated and uh, get our other vegetables in the pot, then we will go in with some chicken stock, some homemade chicken stock, and that'll be our process. So uh, the first thing that we want to do is I've got some water over here that's boiling because for uh, with tomatoes, you always want to go ahead and peel those tomatoes. And in this case, I, you know, if I had Roma tomatoes, I would probably um, not worry about seeds. But in this case, we do, we, these are not Roma tomatoes. These are, um, you know, cherry tomatoes and just uh, other tomatoes from our garden. And we do need to pull the seeds out of them. So the first thing I'm going to do is peel these tomatoes uh, because the, the, a lot of people have a hard time digesting the, 
the skin of a tomato. So to, in order to peel the tomato, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna score them lightly um, here in, in the back and the, at the bottom here, and then we're gonna remove the navel, the belly button from the tomatoes. And I've got some water boiling. And what we'll do is we'll put these tomatoes in our boiling water for really 15 seconds, something like that. And then we're gonna shock them in, some, in a cold water bath. So that'll be the first thing that we do. We'll go ahead and put those in, boiling water. And, you know, really the best thing to do when you're, when you're doing this with the tomatoes is to count to about, about 20 seconds. And that will be all the time that you need for those tomatoes. So we've got, oh, I've got one more here. Let's stick that in there. And then what we'll do is take those out of the water and we're gonna shock them. And that should make that skin very, very loose. And we'll be able to peel those tomatoes really easily with that. So the next thing that we're gonna do, since we've got this, this water boiling, is I'm just gonna go ahead and also blanch our, our snap green pea, our, our, our peas. And um, so we can, you know, the tomatoes didn't really leave much, much color in here, so we'll shock those and we'll uh, blanch these peas very quickly. And we'll take those out here in just a second and put them with the tomatoes. We've taken our tomatoes out of the boiling water. We've put it in some cold water to shock them. And now, and we just let them sit in there for three or four minutes. And now we'll just set them in another, another bowl. And we've also blanched our uh, sugar snap peas. And we'll go ahead and put those in a cold water bath. And that'll be it for our hot, hot boiling water. We don't, we don't need that anymore. So that's done. And what I'm gonna do is kind of clear the table while we've got everything sitting here and we'll get the rest of our vegetables prepared. And we'll put our squash there. I'm gonna leave the aromatic vegetables that we're gonna use on the table here. And this is our butter, by the way. I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but we'll uh, use that to sweat our vegetables. And then there's our bouquet garni. So, to get our vegetables started, we are just, I've got a half of a, of a white onion here that we will just uh, fi do a fine, we're gonna do a fine dice on all of these, on all these vegetables. And you don't have to do a fine dice, you could do a, you could do a slice or whatever you want, but in this case, I'm just gonna do a fine dice. So in order to do that, we'll just make some vertical slices there and we'll make a horizontal slice here and now using your thumb to stabilize things using your knuckle as your guide just come down and that gives you your your dice on your onions and so what I'm going to do is go ahead and get our our butter melting and that will be our base for our for our soup get our butter melting get the rest of that going there and in addition to just this half a white onion that I have had a little bit of leek left over so we'll just go ahead and cut that up we'll put that in there just slicing it just like that and also I had some spring onions you know sometimes you buy spring onions and you know you use the green part but you don't use the white part so that's what we'll do here is we'll just use the white part that's left over and sometimes you get that little loose skin part on top there so we'll treat these just like the other onions get those sliced up perfect and one more and this will probably be enough onion for this um, for this soup since we don't have that many more vegetables that we're putting in it. So that will get our onions going. And we see that our, our butter is melting. And that will get our 
onion started. And now the other part of our uh, base is going to be carrots and celery. So we're doing basically uh, the, the holy trinity of vegetables, onions, carrots, and celery. And, you know, you don't really want people to get large chunks of celery, so we'll go ahead and break the celery down into a nice fine dice as well. So same thing with the celery. And you can see why having a nice sharp knife in the kitchen is very, very handy. And so we can just add the celery now to our onions. And I've done, I've gone ahead and peeled this one carrot. And so we'll add that carrot, remove the root, remove the other end. And the safest thing with carrots is to cut them in half by putting your hands on either side, just like this. All right, and then you can just, now you've got flat surface to work with. Cut those flat surfaces in half, just like that. And now what I like to do, and you could even cut it in half again if you want to make sure that it's nice, nice, finely diced. And now we'll just come straight down just like that. We're just making, really this is called batonets. Same thing, using your knuckle as a guide for that. Go ahead and get those cut up. And let's go ahead and do another little Batonet there. Got four different pieces of this carrot, or really eight different pieces once you cut it in half twice. Okay. And we'll get that in there. And just note that our our heat is on. Need to keep it on low because we, we don't want any color on these vegetables. We really just want them to get nice and soft. And let's go ahead and use, I'm going to use another little bit of this, of this carrot. And just like that. Okay. Carrots are done. And now while all that's breaking down, let's break down the rest of our of our bell pepper. So as I said, I've already used a portion of this bell pepper. So we're going to use half of each one of them. So oops. Oh, and by the way, just just so you know, when I'm when I'm cooking in the kitchen, it's really handy to have a uh, it's called a poubelle in France, but it's just a little just a little tabletop trash can. It's fantastic. It's got a bag in it. And if you com compost it all, it's great. All you do is just take your bag out, go throw it in your compost, and then close it up just like that. So that is nice and handy to have. All right, on to our peppers. And if you got, you know, if you're susceptible to not being able to digest, uh, you know, pepper skin, it may be a, a good idea to remove those uh, the skins of these peppers by you know first roasting them, or you know if you've got just roasted peppers in a jar that you've that you've uh, already gotten the gotten the, in the cupboard that works as well. But the idea of this, of course, like I said, is to use your fresh vegetables. That's probably going to be enough of that. And we'll do the same thing with our next two veg our next two peppers. But this is the way that I like generally like to break down my peppers is that way and take the top off and then we'll come down along the side and we cut the the I guess the ribs out and now you can just make batonets like that. Same thing, it's probably going to be enough pepper, very nice, and then same thing for dicing, okay, and that's it for our yellow pepper, and we'll do the same thing for our, obviously this at one point was a green pepper. And now it's orange. 
I don't know if you know, but you know, bell peppers, the different colors of bell peppers, as far as my understanding is, is they're really all the same pepper. They're just at different stages of their ripeness on the vine. So that may uh, speak to why, you know, a red bell pepper tastes probably a little bit sweeter than a green bell pepper does. And you can really tell that when you, when you saute them, how different they taste. So again, we've got a very low heat here and we're just getting, I mean, look at, look at this. I don't know if you can see that, but wow. Beautiful color of all these vegetables in there. And now for our fennel bulb, we're not gonna use the top. We'll keep that top for something else later. Um, oh, by the way, I need to put my garlic in, but we won't put that in until it'll be the very last aromatic that we're gonna put in. But your fennel bulb, uh, you've got that. And I'm just gonna kind of treat it like onion. Fennel is a strong flavor, and so it doesn't take a whole lot of it. So we'll just come down and cut it just like that. Okay, and that'll be enough of the fennel bulb, because like I said, it's a strong flavor, and it can definitely overpower everything that's going on. Now, once we have our vegetables getting nice and soft we're just going to put our garlic in and i'm just going to i'm just going to use my garlic smasher to uh add that garlic to that so you know and with our heat on uh on low like it is that'll keep anything from that'll keep anything from overcooking okay Got a little bit of skin in there all right so that's the main part of our aromatics for our soup and let's go ahead and give them just a little bit of a little bit of salt and that will season them and also help to bring a little bit of the moisture out now what I do at this point is start adding the vegetables that may take a little bit longer to to cook so we're gonna put our potato in next and I'm just gonna peel it and then we'll just We'll do probably a half inch dice on our potato. And again, you know, this is a, a soup that you're using what you've got. So if you've got a rutabaga sitting around, if you've got a turnip sitting around, just peel it and put it right in there. And it adds a great texture and a great flavor to your soup. And generally I like to put my zucchinis in last or almost last because they are one of the uh, quickest cooking vegetables there are. So with the potato, I'm just going to, I like to cut it in half like this, and then we'll cut it in half again like that, because again, we're going for fairly large chunks of this potato that and a dice we're not necessarily going for for pretty we're just going for kind of consistency of size and uh, cooking time all right potatoes are ready Let's just put them in their own little bowl. And we'll reach over and give our aromatics another little stir. And again, you see nothing is getting any color on it yet. So that is fantastic. And now let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and put our potatoes in. And let's do our carrot next. And I saved this one carrot because we're going to we're going to do a little bit larger pieces of carrot, kind of like the same uh, size as we did our uh, potato. 
So we'll get it nice and peeled. And we'll do the same thing. We'll use, we'll use some more of this carrot. I'm just going to cut that in half. And I'm not sure what that size is, but half again, just like that. Half again, half again, another half, two more halves, and look how nice and easy that cuts. All right, those are going to go in, and just we're just we're just building flavor upon flavor as we as we do this. Take a look again at this. It's just. Uh, it's very pretty, coming right along. And our, so we've got our beans here. Let's go ahead, they are, or I keep calling them beans, they're really sugar snap peas, so we're gonna put those in. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut them, probably, I don't know what that is, about like that. Actually, let's not put those in just yet because they will, we, I, like, I like for beans to stay a little bit crisp when we're, when we're eating them, so. All right, so the next thing is, this is our patty pan squash. And so to break this squash down, easiest thing to do is just to cut it in half. And, and again, it's good to have a sharp knife because it's kind of, a, kind of a tough one. All right, you open it up and you see just a little area there with some seeds. So I just like to take a spoon and just kind of coax those seeds out. And these seeds are kind of like pumpkin seeds or any other seeds. You could certainly take them out and, you know, roast them or toast them if you wanted to, wanted to do that. But that's what it looks like on the inside. So to peel this, I'm just gonna give this Another quick stir. So I'm, I'm starting to hear this do a little bit of searing and we don't really want that. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and add a little bit of our chicken stock. I'm not gonna add it all yet, just a little bit of it, just to keep things from cooking too fast there. So for this patty pan squash, you can peel it by either using your peeler like that or like this or you can use your paring knife. You know, there, it's kind of a tough, kind of a tough skin on the outside. So, um, you know, whatever method you find is easiest to do. If you've got a good peeler, it's, it's helpful to use that. Either way you look at it, it's still awkward to, to peel. But I'm telling you what, it has a great flavor. I don't even know how to describe it. It's not like it's, I don't know. It's not like it's zucchini. Um, it's just a different flavor than the other squashes. And it's got a nice uh, earthy but sweet flavor. So this is the best way that I know to kind of break it down with that weird shape. And then if you need to take your, your paring knife, it's good to, again, it's good to have a sharp one and do that. You certainly can. Just like that. Then now you've got a flat surface that you can just put that squash on. And oops, I didn't forgot to finish peeling that side. Let's do this one. We'll finish this. And now what we'll do is just come down just like that. And it almost kind of fools you into thinking that you are, you're eating a potato. I don't know about you, but you know, potatoes are one of my very favorites. So there we go. That squash in, and probably for the size of our pan, I'm only going to use this half of this of this squash. Okay, 
Okay. And again, if you get a little bit of the skin in there, it's not, not going to kill anybody. Okay, there's our patty pan squash, and I think that that is probably going to be all we need for our vegetables. So at this point, what I'm going to do is go ahead and add our stock. I'm just going to cover this with our chicken stock, and then... While that's coming up, we will, let's clean our board here. We'll go ahead and peel our tomatoes. And look how nice and easily that comes off. Just fantastic, just like that. In fact, you could just take your hands if you wanted to and do that. See how nice and easy? Beautiful. This, this process, by the way, just in case you were interested, is called Monde in French. M-O-N-D-E-R or D-E-Z. I can't remember. To Monde. And um, all that means is to peel it. And now we're going to, uh, you know, be able to just use the the meat portion of the tomato. And again, like I said, if you were using, if you're using Roma tomatoes, you, this part you don't need to do because Romas don't carry as many seeds as some of these other tomatoes. But in this case, you see we've got all those seeds in there. We're gonna take those out. And to do that, we're basically making petals. And to do that, you cut them in quarters and you just come straight down like this and it just gets all the seeds just like that. You're just cutting right along the, you're just cutting the, the seeds out. And that's how you monde and seed a tomato. So we'll get the rest of these done and we'll add those to our mix. So the next thing we want to do is uh, we've got the rest of our zucchini that we didn't add before. So I'm just going to now dice that and this is the skin, it's skin on so let's go the end away and so for for the skin on uh, zucchini I'm just going to dice it and we'll add it to the rest of our soup which we have we've already added our stock and again you know if you if you add your stock and you realize uh, you may, it, this is going to be quite thick, so what I may do is go back in with a little bit more stock or some water over the top of it. Now, go ahead and bring your heat up, and while that's coming up to a boil, we'll go ahead and make our uh, bouquet garni. So again, we've got our herbs that go into our bouquet garni, and what we'll do is we'll take a piece of kitchen string, just like that, and we're just going to line this with our herbs like that. And let's roll them up. Just like that. And now we'll just, what I do is like cut part of the leaf this way and then just start rolling this around. And what this does is it allows all that, and then you cut the other top in just like that. What this does is allow all of that wonderful flavor from these fresh herbs uh, to get into your soup without you know having loose leaves and that kind of thing roll around in there and of course you're certainly welcome to use some dry herbs if you'd like you've just got if you've got you know some Italian herbs in the on the countertop or I mean in the counter in the cupboard or if you've got some um, herbs of Provence which I know we can get in the States. And we'll just put that in, in our soup. And once this comes to the boil, we still, we have our tomatoes here. Once this comes to the boil 
and then we turn it down to simmer, that's when we'll put our tomatoes in. They're the last thing to go in because I still want a little bit of that tomato. Oh, let's, let's put our uh, sugar snap peas in. And, uh, but what I was going to say is I, once this comes to the boil and then you turn it down is when you put your tomatoes in because we still want a little bit of that, of that texture from these tomatoes. And then we'll season it and that'll be it. That's how easy it is to make a vegetable soup. So we'll let this come up to the boil and uh, we'll put our tomatoes in and let it cook for about another 20 minutes. Hey everybody, it's Walter from Artistic Gourmet Adventures. My wife Kim and I own this unique small group tour company where we host groups of six to 12 guests for one week luxury adventures in beautiful locations throughout Europe and the United States. I have the privilege of being the adventure chef creating and preparing daily gourmet meals for our guests. So in this video series from our cozy home kitchen here in the beautiful Loire Valley of France, we will demonstrate a wide variety of recipes from culinary classics to originals, as well as covering professional kitchen techniques for the home chef. For more information on Artistic Gourmet Adventures, check our website linked in the description below. Yeah. Our soup is coming to the boil. And so now what we'll do is um, we'll go ahead and put in our tomatoes. Look at that. Look at the, just the fresh, healthy goodness. And this was just vegetables that, you know, a lot of times people throw, throw that away. I mean, you know, you've used them for other dishes and that's what you had left over. But, you know, you can feed eight people with this. And so that's, uh, that's what we've, uh, we've got there. And now we hadn't really talked about seasoning this, but of course you can go any direction you want. I always like to put a little bit of uh, turmeric in my, in my fresh soups. Uh, for, for one thing, it has very strong um, health qualities and uh, it's great for inflammation. Um, I blood pressure. I think there's lots of different proven uh, uses of, of turmeric and, and the health benefits of it. So it's very nice to have a little bit of turmeric. Plus, I love the flavor of it. And we're in France, so I'm going to use a little bit of Esplet pepper. Esplet in France is similar to cayenne pepper. It's although it's not really hot. Uh, it's, got, it's just a little bit of a. It's a it's a dried pepper like like cayenne would be. We'll put a little bit of black pepper in there as well, but it's not, uh, you know, bitingly hot like a cayenne could be. And we'll just go in with a little bit of salt. And by the way, I tasted this right before we, uh, right as it was coming to a boil. And I am just, uh, it, I'm just always amazed how great it is um, before it even has, you know, time to cook. It's just delicious. And... You know, I think it's a combination of the butter from the very start, really, really great French butter. You know, butter, onions, garlic. Uh, how can you go wrong with that? You know, some fresh uh, bell peppers. And I mean, you could just add some chicken stock to that and that'd be a great soup. But in this case, we've got all these wonderful vegetables. And just as an aside, my wife was just reminding me that very, very seldom, as a matter of fact, I don't know that in several years that we've been living and coming to France, have we ever gotten a chunky vegetable soup? You can go to a restaurant and you order the vegetable soup and it comes out creamy because it's, um, they, they whiz it all up in a, in a blender. And so that's one of the big differences that we found being in France is that you don't really get uh, a chunky vegetable soup as much. So that soup is ready in it, literally in 15, 20 minutes. It's, it's good to go. Our soup has gone about, it's really, it's been about 15 minutes. And, you know, at this point, it really is, is up its personal preference. By the way, I went ahead and threw, I had a, a just a can of uh, crunchy corn baby corn, so I threw a little bit of that in. That's, that's always a great addition, and I'll make sure that I'll put that in the recipe as well. Um, but if you've got some frozen corn or some frozen green peas, frozen green beans, throw that in the last five minutes, and it is just fantastic. Now at this point, you it's, it's kind of up to you as to how, if you like your vegetables really soft, or if you still like a little bit of crunch, 
Um, you know, I like a little bit of crunch to my vegetables. So let's, I'm just gonna push one against the side here and see. Yeah, that's still nice and nice and very soft. So let's just take a little bit of a taste to it. Hmm. To me, that's perfect. Perfect amount of crunch. You can still tell what it is you're eating. Uh, it's not just complete mush. And uh, man, you talk about depth of flavor. And at this point, you know, if you wanted to, hey, you could, you could add a little bit more, you know, pepper, a little bit more salt, that kind of thing. But however you want to balance that. But wow, what a quick and easy way to first of all use up all those vegetables that you have, and then uh, secondly. Uh, just have a great meal or a great starter. And so let's get it served up. Well, I'll tell you what, this is the moment we've been waiting for. And uh, we have got this soup done and it is just, it just smells stunning. And I can't wait to dive in. So let's take a look. Oh, look at that. Wow. Beautiful color. Look at the nice color in there. And let's, uh, oh, nice vegetables, nice bulk. We like that. Let's go ahead and dip a little bit in our, into our bowl here. And you've probably seen me do this before, but it always helps when you're, especially if you're at the table and you're, you know, dipping something out of a soup bowl with a ladle, just use the lid from the, from the pot to, keep those drips from happening. So that's it. That is our perfect, uh, easy fall, fall vegetable soup. Well, it's time for us to give this a taste. So this is our fall vegetable soup. And uh, we've paired this with, uh, with a nice uh, red Cabernet Franc wine. Let's just have a, have a go at the soup. Mmm, that has incredible depth of flavor. It really does. I mean, everything in there, you taste the herbs in there, um, the beautiful chicken stock. And again, you can use, you can make this with vegetable stock if you wanted to completely keep it vegetarian. Uh, you could use olive oil instead of butter if you want. I just like the flavor of the butter. It's just so wonderful. And especially when you serve it with a nice crusty French baguette. Mmm, and of course you got to be able to dip that baguette into your, mmm, man that is it. And we've got this beautiful Cabernet Franc, which is from the Loire Valley area of France. This wine is perfect with this soup, because again it's a hearty soup, you know, if it was a very light, uh, creamy soup, we probably wouldn't use this wine with it, but it's a hearty and robust soup, and it can work well with a wine that's got a little bit more robustness to it as well. So, you know, normally you would think with a soup you'd pair it with a Pinot Noir or a, even a white wine or something like that, but this Cabernet Franc is kind of between a Pinot Noir and a Cabernet Sauvignon, so it goes perfectly with the soup. Hope you try it, hope you enjoy it. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, give us a thumbs up below and hit that subscribe button, it's free. And ring the bell if you wanna be notified as soon as we release a new video. Also, let us know in the comments if you have any special recipe requests. We really appreciate you tuning in. See you next time.